This will not make the cut. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. That's good. I think this is gold. Uh, I mean, it, it very well could be. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. If it's the easiest thing for him to put in there, it'll make it. Uh, yeah. The first, the first usable clip I find will be the one that I, I don't, I don't dig through fifteen minutes of this nonsense. <laughs> If you tuned in expecting Bigfoot, eh, he might show up later on in this episode. I can't really tell when Bigfoot's going to show up, but, you know, stick around for other episodes. <laughs> he usually shows up there. <laughs> oh, he's, he's new. <laughs> Colin's doing something next week. It might very well be Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. He's doing something this week, too. He is? Yeah. On the Patreon. Go there. There's Bigfoot. <laughs> Welcome to High Mystery, the podcast. A podcast where we smoke weed. And we talk about mysteries. We sure do. Yeah. I'm Robert. I'm Colin. I'm Tristan. And that is the gang. <laughs> or team or crew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, I don't know. Gang, it makes me think of Scooby-Doo. Like yeah. Scooby-Doo and the gang. Yeah, I prefer you call us a band of rapscallions. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> a gaggle of misfits. Sure. Uh, I like that one, too. <laughs> Uh, so, like I said, we will be smoking weed. Mm -hmm. I have a blunt that I packed in a, um, a Hubba Bubba High Hemp Wrap. Yes. And it is filled with the Tahoe OG, which uh, in last week we could not determine the THC content. You see that now. Oh, you got it? But no, now. I've got. <laughs> I don't have percentages, but I oh, have really? the milligram, uh, which is that to that's us. the equivalent. Yeah, that's three hundred and two point forty three milligrams. So thirty point two percent usually. Boom, thirty point two percent THC. <laughs> Figured it out, guys. Oh, this is so oh, great. Oh, Math oh, is figured. fun, <laughs> and you should stay in school like we all did. It's the language yeah. of the universe. <laughs> yes, that's that how we say? communicate with aliens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, oh, music, right? Music? Is that another language? Yeah, the that's how they communicated in Close Encounters. <laughs> that means I want some milk. Nice. Uh, I've got a high hemp pineapple paradise wrap, because, you know, that's how I always do. Inside, I've got some champagne toast, some milk bar, some GMO cookies, some velvet pie, some lemon kush mints, some lemon drip and some black cherry. Sounds All right. pretty tasty. It sounds like very a tasty citrusy. Bowl. Yeah, and it's got a lot of fruit going on. You yeah, know? it's like a good fruit salad. There's fruit probably, delicious. There's probably some little marshmallows in there too. Mm. Oh, like an ambrosia, mm -hmm. like a fruit cake. <laughs> kind of, but not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> not so dense. Yeah, you'd want to eat this fruit salad. Uh, I have a little pre-roll. It's a selfies. By, uh, crafted by Hashish. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those joints are funny. They remind me of like emergency rash. They come in a little foil pouch. Yeah, just, like, I wish. Rip it open and there's two inside. I wish it was like that and I could just like add a little water and it would like triple its size, <laughs> but it does not do that, yeah, unfortunately. Sure. No, I mean more in the sense that, like, if you were in an underground bunker, I imagine that would be your weed supply. Oh, uh, that's Rip was, it open. Uh, you only get one of these a day. That would be a sad. I mean, at least you had the one. Could you? I was gonna say, at, at least you got something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this has got that super glue hybrid in it. Uh, Eighteen point six percent. You know, it's no thirty percent, but it's it's okay. I didn't even have my percentages this time, so you know. It, uh, you had my percentage, and that's all that matters. I also feel like percentage it's, is percentage. You know? <laughs> like it's if it's still gonna get me there. It'll yeah. give me a little head lift. It'll make uh, me throw out some interesting comments on your mysteries. I'm sure. Well, and as we've talked about, you know, there are different chemicals active, and the way they balance together matters too. Like CBD can be a nullifier for THC. Mm -hmm. So if you have a really high CBD content, it might not necessarily be as potent. So if you've taken some edibles and you're freaking out, man. Take a thousand milligrams of CBD. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> CBD it up. Right. Or I, I hear cheese, like milk dairy products are also good. Same thing with like 
uh, mushrooms. Ooh, okay, I would do the mushrooms. I'm intolerant to lactose. No, the mushrooms, if like you're if too you, crazy Oh, I see. <laughs> I was hoping, like, the mushrooms would suck it up or something. I've heard stuff like that, too. Like, drink orange juice or, like, but I have no idea how substantiated oh, it see, is. I thought that it only intensified if you drank orange juice. For the mushrooms, yeah. Cause oh, the, really? The citrus. Yeah. See, and now I've heard that the acid will eat it up real quick, oh. so it's not leaching into your system anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. try it and get back to us. Put in the <laughs> comments of this YouTube. <laughs> back in the day, they used to think that mushrooms, when you hallucinated off of mushrooms, that it was like your body's reaction to being poisoned. Yeah. yeah. That's not the case. Oh. New science, oh, science has proven that you're actually forming new neural pathways, and that's why you have an altered... Uh, way of perception or thinking that you don't normally have and you can have these like enlightened moments because you're actually forging new neural pathways and that's why wow. it's also a good uh homeopathic for people who've had to undergo like brain trauma because mm -hmm. then it can like yeah forge new neural pathways that could work around the damaged areas well all i can say is the time i did mushrooms i couldn't make heads or tails of mighty ducks three so i don't know <laughs> i mean i, I watched <laughs> that completely sober and had the similar thoughts so, uh, what is Peter Thompson doing here? <laughs> shall we touch tips where's cal <laughs> <laughs> Shall we touch tips? What is this? The sleepover? <laughs> I feel like this this little pre-roll that I have, people on Twitch can see it. I feel like I wish this was gonna be like the noisy cricket. I'm in a <laughs> like I wish this was gonna just blow me away. <laughs> blow you uh, across the street into I a guess car. if I truly wanted to, maybe I can manifest that into reality. Well, hopefully soon enough we'll all have vaccines and we'll be able to smoke together again. Um, I yeah. will not be getting that vaccine. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I hear anti-vaxxers are really rational. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Rob. All right. So before I get into this mystery, I just wanted to say a few things. First, this is Same. a very dark mystery. Uh, okay. So yeah, it it deals not with your some normal mystery. Yeah, <laughs> normal. deals with some very heavy topics such as suicide, hate crimes, <coughs> and governmental cover-ups. So triggers. Triggers will be warned. If you got them, put your safety on. Yeah. <laughs> the safety on those triggers. Uh, it's a mystery that I've kind of, you know, struggled with doing. You know, we've been doing this for, this is our third year doing it. And I'm like, kind of, eh, should I do it? Should I not do it? Uh, for multiple reasons. One being that, you know, it's, uh, it is dark. Um, and also, I'm not entirely sure there's a mystery to be had here. Oh, so like uh, all your mysteries. <laughs> we're like, yeah, it's definitely the boyfriend. You're definitely, you're definitely. Yeah, you you will on the face on the surface of it, you will be like, no mystery. Okay. But then I will throw in some details right. that might be like, well, that's a little trying. <laughs> but uh, also, it it's actually about somebody that I know. <gasps> that I knew. Ooh, it's pretty crazy. Right? Personal contact. It's person it's the first time and who knows, maybe the last <laughs> that we do a personal mystery on this podcast. Uh, don't feel any like restrictions. If you need to weep, <laughs> let yourself. It's a normal emotion. People, society have mm -hmm. uh, demonized crying. Don't don't do that. Let your, let the tears uh, flow. Let it release. Nah, the tears only flow when I'm asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> just wake up to a, a soggy yeah. pillow. No, just uh, just the white tracks down my face. You ever get that? No. Uh, every morning. Oh. Every morning I wake up and there's just salt tracks. <laughs> I'd cry it out sometimes. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing in my sleep, but you're releasing um, because you don't do it. <laughs> I got when you're watery awake. eyes. When you're conscious, you're like holding in all the emotions, and then when you go to sleep, you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I'll be crying on this one, oh, but yeah. this is the mystery the about. Could, yes. Oh, so, thank you. <laughs> so thank you for space. permission. Yes. <laughs> well, we're just no judgment. When yeah, no, pass, no, no, is what yeah. we're saying. Men can yeah. cry too. In fact, it makes them more manly. This is a safe space for all the world to hear. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So this mystery is about the death of CPO John Keith Bemis. CPO means Chief Petty Officer. For the, so the you went know. to war with this man. Uh, sure, yes, I was. I was in the shit with this guy. You were in the trenches. <laughs> yes. 
The trenches of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean at some point bombs were dropping around you guys and he was carrying you out over his shoulder? Yeah, it was a very Forrest Gump. I was Bubba in that scenario. He was the Forrest Gump in that scenario. So he's no, not Bubba because he didn't live. Oh, wait, no. I, I, it was Lieutenant Dan that he Spoiler came. Spoiler alert. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, Lieutenant Dan Lieutenant screaming Dan. at him to leave him behind. <laughs> but you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Academy of Warfare. Mm. All right. So uh, long-time listeners will know that I was in the Navy for four years, between 2002 and 2006. I was a gas turbine systems electrician, which uh, in Basically all actuality... You fired a lot. It, it just meant I, tur- I, uh, I screwed in a lot of light bulbs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we know gas turbines. <laughs> we get the joke wrong. What you really do in the day? Basically just a general <laughs> run-of-the-mill electrical engineer. Yes, yes. Nothing famous. If you need some light bulbs, put yeah. it in, Rob's your guy. No, I know I know a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> is it true or is it a myth that you have to rub your oils off the light bulb before screwing it in because it can like make them pop? Like I, I was taught that though. Oils like you from have, your hand? Yeah, just like when hand you screw oils? it in, you're supposed to like wipe the hand oils off or something, no? Maybe you know I mean? maybe like ancient light bulbs or something. Like yeah, I, I don't know. I just figured you knew It's light never bulbs been an <laughs> issue that's come up when screwing in light bulbs. Um Yeah, I've done them with oily hands plenty yeah. of times. I mean, as a as an engineer, you just have oil all over you pretty much all the time. Because most of what I do or did Is was moving things. Well, it's taking oil samples, making sure that there's no, yes. you know, samples. sediment in the lube oil or the fuel yeah. oil. Using like the it. consistency of it. Yeah. Using your it. dipstick. We got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Took, took a God lot of damn samples. It, we're 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you set them up, we got to knock them down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at any rate, I was a pretty lazy person in the Navy, so I didn't stay in very long. They didn't like me, and I didn't really like it. But uh, while I was in the Navy, I was on board the USS Lake Champlain. They were uh, stationed out of San Diego. On board this ship was Bemis. He was an engine man, which essentially dealt in (coughs) AC and R repair. It's kind of weird that your ship was named after a lake. Well, it's the Battle of Lake Champlain. It's the named after. Still. <laughs> I had to learn all this stuff to get my surface warfare. Is that a sparkling Champlain? Uh, Was that some, like, 1850s war with France and Canada? No, no. It was in America. It was, um, I, I want to say, in America. <laughs> I don't know the. I thought you had to learn. I did have to learn. This was so many 2002 to 2006, so I haven't had to learn about this stuff for 15 years. <laughs> they didn't they like, <laughs> shove it into you and ingrain it into your brain. For I just had to take a test to get a pin, and yeah. when I got that pin, it meant that I can uh, forget it all. Yeah, I could forget it all, and I could like um, <laughs> stay out overnight when I went to port. That was the only incentive. Is that. People with surface warfare pins didn't have to come back to the ship at like midnight. Were they hoping that you'd be out and about and someone would be like, huh, interesting pin. What is that for? Uh, no. Well, let me tell you the history of my ship. <laughs> that was the only incentive to get the pin. The pin actually meant that if like the ship were to sustain a lot of damage, a lot of casualties, people on board the ship with that pin could take over feasibly other people's jobs because they knew all the different I things see. and jobs on the ship. And huh. one part of that is learning about your ship, the history of the <laughs> ship, and Navy history and all that kind of shit. So you were able to take over somebody else's spot if you needed to? I mean, according to the pin, I was. Uh, uh, you're like, I'm not really. But yeah, don't, don't try and test me on that now, certainly. <laughs> Rob, you're the captain of the ship now. You've got the pin. <laughs> CBO Rob, you know your, the Lake Champlain history. Drive this thing out of port. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, when I was actually getting that pin, this guy, Bemis, actually helped me get that pin. He was uh, like a, a year or two in the Navy longer than me, so he was always like a rank above me. Okay. And so he was kind of like the person that I would go to if I needed help. Super nice guy, super smart. The guy studied like you cannot believe. Um, so, you know, he was the guy you went to if you needed information about whatever. Like Champlain. About anything, really, yeah. you know, and he was an engineer, so um, we, you know, worked in the same areas within the same, uh, you know, we our uh, uh, living quarters were in the same area, so, you know. Time spent. 
Yeah, Occasionally out. you'd be talking and then a moment would happen and you'd look into each other's eyes and mm-hmm. you'd, you know, you'd shuffled it off after that. <laughs> just, ah, we better get back to work. We get it. We get your relationship. Feet would bump under the table during mass. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, well, a few things about <laughs> Bemis that are true. <laughs> okay. uh, in uh, he worked from 1983 to 1983. So that's pretty cool that the Navy does something proactive for that, I guess. I wouldn't necessarily expect it of them. I mean, I had to stand a suicide watch for one of our shipmates that made threats. And um, I wasn't part of any team or task force or anything. They but just woke the my ass up. You had the <laughs> yeah, I had the yeah, pin. Yeah, you had the pin. <laughs> they woke my ass up and said, stand in front of this guy's bed for however long and somebody will relieve you. The person that relieved me was Bemis. Oh, so Bemis. this guy's uh, up on that. Bemis sounds like a pretty good dude. He's a pretty good dude. You know, I can't, can't deny it. I mean, he was probably, I'd say, the nicest guy on that ship. Wow. Uh, I mean, That's I, no small distinction. I mean, I never really hung out with him because we just weren't into the same things. He was kind of like very religious and okay. he was one of those people that was like super mature and you know, he want he would want to go to a museum sure. when we got to port. I would want to go to a bar, you know, with kids my own age. Mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, in two thousand and four, <laughs> in Rob, fact, you're, you're not gonna believe, you're not gonna miss the Louvre, are you? <laughs> no, we're drunk, man. Right off of the base, uh, so we went there a lot. We can drink at the Louvre, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> we would legitimately go just fifty feet off of the ship, and then there would be a bar, and we would spend all day until we had to go back to the ship at this bar. Well, right. Sounds like you absorbed a lot of culture. Yeah, right? the culture yeah. there was very nice. They all I mean, knew how to make an place. Irish car bomb. Uh, in February 2004 he made Sailor of the Month for preventing a fire nice Um, just an FYI I actually helped him prevent that fire on my day off I didn't get any awards or recognitions why not because he was on he wasn't on duty well yeah I wasn't on duty you know I was I was one of maybe four other people that you know were helping prevent this fire because there's Essentially a ruptured uh, oil pipe or something like that. And you were there with the fire extinguisher? I was there helping to empty out the bilge that uh, had all this oil in it. There's oh, a fire. There's a fire right here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for this fire. I mean, the people on duty eventually took over that posi- you know, that job and stuff. And so I fucked off onto the... Pier, whatever. We were. It was That's my fine. day off. They, they only took the names at the end. They're like, all right, let's round everybody up I mean, and save the day. <laughs> Rob had already fucked off. <laughs> in, in all fairness, I got engineer of the month the first month that I was on that ship. So right. I, I did. I had my own recognition. You had your accolades. <laughs> right. Listen, enough. Not sailor. Enough. I can't. I can't deal with all this attention, all this press. <laughs> I can't possibly accept another award on this ship. Yeah. The it's cabins just... are small. I mean, how many awards can you put by your little car? See, Rob's whole wall was just covered in Engineer of the Month. <laughs> it was Engineer of the Month. You know, each month, and every picture was Rob. <laughs> I mean, it, it, they actually stopped doing Engineer of the Month shortly after I got Engineer. Well, of yeah, the they month. had to retire it. <laughs> No one can talk. It was this. the best. Yeah, it was, they they put your number up in the ceiling. <laughs> New Jersey and said, Britain. They retired my coveralls. They they were hanging right next to the flag on top of the ship. My oil rag is framed. <laughs> wow, Robert Fred. Oh wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I didn't want to be known as the guy that actually got shit accomplished and stuff. I was <laughs> <laughs> trying to fly under the radar. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's see here. I wrote so much about this mystery, knowing that I would not be able to talk Perfect. about all of it. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but like I said, yeah, he, he uh, was a very religious person, always had like a crucifix. On. You know, it's kind of weird to see people dress how they would dress in real life when you've been working beside them for however really long, yeah, like every day and stuff. And then, you know, suddenly somebody dresses like right out of a rap video or somebody dresses like they came back from church or something like that, where it's just sure. you're like, I did not expect that would be your style, <laughs> you know, based on what I know about you. But one thing I knew about him is that he always wore like this big crucifix necklace. So I was kind of like... I'm just like, imagining mm. the most ridiculous things now that like you're so... Right? Oh, I didn't realize you were a furry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Or like... He goes, he's fully Hasidic Jew. <laughs> like, with the, you know, curls. Yeah, right. And the big hat and everything. Uh, I will share a little uh, anecdote. Uh, one of my clearest memories about Bemis um, was when I was on the ship, You, if you did a certain number of volunteer hours, I don't know, like 300 or something like that, you get a volunteer medal or a pin. And I really wanted that for... The coveted pin. I mean, it's, I guess, not everybody <laughs> gets that because, you know, you got to volunteer and not many people do that. I'm, you're so confusing, Rob. You're trying to fly under the radar, but you're also trying to do a bunch of <laughs> no, extra no, credit. No, no. Like, <laughs> you're all, such an extrovert, <laughs> introvert. Like, oh, what, what, what you did when you volunteered is that you would actually get time off of work to volunteer. Okay. I so, see. yeah, instead of working, be like, oh, no, guys, I'm volunteering at this soup kitchen. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a lot of that. It's not a soup kitchen. What volunteering are you actually doing? Uh, well, one was a soup kitchen where we were unloading a lot of food from the trucks to this uh, kitchen. Okay. Um, another one was actually a way to make up a lot of volunteer hours. You know, when you're in kid, like a second grade or whatnot, you would write a letter to you know, a serviceman asking him like, hey, uh, I'm Timmy and uh, I like baseball. Uh, what do you guys like? What do you do on the ship? People would actually write letters back to these kids. Okay. And I was one of those. Does people. anyone monitor those? Like Not the answers really. that are going back to these kids? No. I mean, hopefully people are doing them with the best spirit. Yeah. Hopefully it's not like, hey, kids, Santa Claus is fake and your mom's fucking the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Truth bomb. <laughs> I mean, I guess they could do that if they wanted to, but hopefully it's like, you know, just very g genuine. And <laughs> well, one of those times we were tasked to go to a school and talk to these kids in a classroom about, you know, our time in the military and what it was like and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I and Bemis were the only two people that went to this class. And, um, you know, I don't know how to fucking talk to kids. Where is this class in the U.S.? Uh, it is in the U.S. Um, I can't remember if this was in San Diego or if we went to like a port like Alaska and, t and went to a kid's class there. But I'm pretty sure it was San Diego. Okay. But uh, I think you would be able to remember just based if it was like Alaska. cold as fuck. I was there. <laughs> we were all bundled up. <laughs> I mean, this was a two hour experience 15 plus years ago. So I would still think Alaska would sit in your brain more clearly than San Diego. Well, one of the volunteer things I did in Alaska was uh, we went and hiked this trail that had long been. Um, like abandoned, like it was no longer, it was shut down as a train. that road there. <laughs> that road's been shut down a while, boys. <laughs> People go, but no one returns. There was a horrible accident, you see. <laughs> there was... School bus full of children. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen closely, you can still hear their screams. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, one thing we had to do, we had to clean up this trail that had been abandoned for however long. And uh, they took the engineers because um, there was like this, like a pulley bridge, if you will. Like you get into this cart, like this little um, basket yeah. and you crank yourself along a rope across this, That's cool. you know, like little river stream Creek or whatever the case. And it's pretty high up and stuff. And it's been used for however long we had to fix and grease that up. So oh. you can actually crank your way across. And that was a pretty cool experience. But that was also a volunteer mission that I did in Alaska. Well, that sounds all right, though. I'm surprised but, you didn't find that terrifying. No, I'm, my, when my feet are firmly... I don't have a fear of heights. 
What do you I mean just, when your feet are? You're in a basket. How exactly. are your feet firmly planted? Exactly. My feet are firmly swinging. planted in the basket. Okay. I'm fine <laughs> with that. I have all the faith in the world that that basket's going to hold. Okay. But not a roller coaster. No, no. I can't control that. <laughs> but <laughs> but he can control the slow, basket. Yeah, yeah like, slow across the basket. I can handle things. If I were going at a snail's pace on that roller coaster, you would I'd be all right. for it. Okay. Even when it's going like upside down. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't I mind being like... like upside down just if it's going slower. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is actually pretty, pretty cool experience. Right. I could see a lot of stuff from here. So monorails, ski lifts, those kind of things don't bother. I mean, I would, I would, yeah, monorail, ski lifts, that's all fine. All right, cool. Yeah. We're learning some stuff yeah. about Robert <laughs> <laughs> and his weird proclivities. <laughs> But uh, one of the kids in this class asked me if, uh, like, we ever killed anybody. Really? <laughs> I know, right? And I'm like, I don't know how to answer that. I just was like, uh, I'm just an engineer. <laughs> Someone dies every day, kid. <laughs> but Bemis, he was be he, the seasoned professional that he was, was like, no, the Navy uh, works best in its humanitarian efforts, like helping uh, countries that were affected by hurricanes or something like that. We give relief to that. And it was like a perfect textbook answer. I was like, ah, hats Good off job, to you, Senator. man. Yes, yeah, yeah, you're going places in life. I'm, I'm going to fuck off on this Game Boy for a bit. <laughs> Bemis, Bemis 2038. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into the mystery. All right, okay. Because you said this was... The death mystery? This, so is this his? This is his. Oh, so, no. Unless it's his ghost running. Well, who knows? Ghost be missed. Ghost be missed, yes. <laughs> yeah, it possessed somebody. Oh. In the nicest way you can. <laughs> the ni the nicest possession. Yeah. Well, you have to allow yourself to be possessed. <laughs> I'm sure there you are have plenty to be accepting of, of it. There are yes. plenty of people open to possession, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it betters my, you know career or life in any type of way like if Look, the possession kid, person be president bemis yeah, right? will inhabit your body yeah. and we'll go places bemis yeah. if you're like going to be president if you're going to make me president you can you can make me president i have no problem with that <laughs> All of a sudden, Rob starts wearing a cross, starts yeah, talking right. about humanitarian acts, yeah. and being all smart. <laughs> um, on August 7th, 2012, Bemis was found fatally shot in his home in Spring Valley, California. Oh, no. At this time, he was stationed on the USS Independence. The Location of shot, said shot? It was uh, <laughs> a single intraoral gunshot wound. So, so through his mouth. In through his mouth. Oof. Yes. <laughs> Bemis. The, uh, he was found um, in his bedroom, lying on his back in full uniform with his motorcycle helmet on. Interesting. Right? It's hmm. pretty interesting. I mean, I guess he was afraid that, like, shrapnel would injure somebody if it, like, went out his, like, head, so he, like, tried to contain the bullet. Or maybe, maybe being this is so, uh, what's the word? Like, so looking out for other people that if he knew he was going to do this, he yeah, kept didn't... it from being messy. That is true. Yeah, uh, didn't want the bullet to go far. Didn't want to disturb anybody with maybe the noise. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of possibilities. Or maybe he had or... just gone home from riding his motorcycle. Someone killed him, put yeah, a gun in his right mouth, now. and shot him. Well, uh, and then put him in his. Uh, we'll definitely get into the <laughs> okay. details that might, because on the surface, yes, it was quickly ruled a suicide because this is what it looks like. Um, but there are a few things that didn't exactly line up with that narrative. So I mean, sad. already there's a few things that point against suicide. Right. Religion is often uh, a factor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, be, that was the first <clears throat> thing I was going to say. Okay. And then yeah. also like having... Him running the... The suicide, the suicide center. center yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. So, like, he's aware. He's probably more aware and knowledgeable than normal people. Yes. Were there any, like, indications that would typically associate with suicide? Like, does he start seeing a therapist? Does he ever get uh, no. hospitalized? No. no he... Nothing in his record that were, like, uh, they say it, uh, they give the right word, but, like, predeterminants or whatever the case is. Yes. Right, like he wasn't not showing up to places looking yeah. at Yeah. He wasn't giving away possessions. No. Not eating. No. no. 
No. Uh, so, I, like I said, he was a religious man. Not only did his religion condemn uh, suicide, um, but, you know, him being a suicide prevention advocate also speaks to that. And there are no medical or mental health issues or stressors in his medical records to speak of. And nothing like super crazy had just happened with work or his life or anything? Um, well, some stuff did happen, but uh, I will say that there was also no suicide note found at all. Uh -huh. um, Bemis's family refused to believe that their son uh, committed suicide, so they got the help of the Armed Forces Medical Examiner to conduct a second autopsy. Mm. Uh, both the Armed Forces Medical Examiner and the San Diego Medical Examiner ruled the cause of death to be a suicide. The family received copies of the autopsy reports along with photos and were quick to notice words and numbers written all over Bemis's body. Whoa. Words like, like... No, just written in ink. In ink. Uh, words like gay and fag were written multiple times. These words were also found on areas of his body he would not likely be able to reach, like on the back of his neck, face, hands, and on his butt. Oh, God. Yeah, that's very weird and not right. cool. And then also, like, those are very, like, notable things that a coroner should at least, like, I attribute to. Right. Yeah. I should say that it is debatable whether or not you see these numbers and words. Oh, this is just according to the family. This is according to the family. They see it. The medical examiner does not see it. Oh. They do uh, later on. Because um, like they had been like washed off or something. So it's like faint. Yeah, it's, it's faint. You can't really s tell whether or not that they're actually there. Huh. Um, numbers were found written on his tongue, left hand, and in his hair. What were the numbers? Uh, 35 showed up uh, a couple of times, but uh, just, I guess, other random numbers. Oh. Interesting. Um, also, numbers on his penis and a picture of a lady holding a child looking at his penis and numbers on his lips and in his mouth. That's weird. Yeah. What's these the words. picture? What? Like an illustration yeah, of an a illustration lady holding a holding baby. baby on just, his body. On his body, I guess. Facing or looking at his dick. So like on his thigh or something? Something like, like that. Over. Yeah. Huh. You can go to the family has set up a website. You can actually look at the actual pictures of the scene. I didn't want to look at them because sure. I still want to sleep at night. Yeah. But you can actually look at these and make those assessments for yourself. <clears throat> if that's as exists yeah. or doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the morbid curiosity is there. Look. If my mom looks at my body after some horrific accident and she's pretty sure about something, you know, just take, take a word, a word, for, word it, for it. Yeah. I'm yeah. willing to take his mom's word for yeah. it. Why the fuck else would she, you know? Exactly. And you don't just pull with straws on this kind of thing. Like, I'll take mom's word for it. They're, yeah, they're there's there. some pretty detailed stuff, too. Like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> it would be a weird make like makeup story. Yeah, it, it would be easy enough to like say they were pentagrams or something sure. like that, as opposed to something much less clear and much yeah. more strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at least uh, that's where also, I see it, how I see it on his tongue. Yeah, know, and like hit top of his head and stuff. I like, I know. Yeah, very weird. Uh, the words were also found written on items in his bedroom, like his entertainment center. And in his bloodstain was the drawing of Satan with the words, with those words, as well as the number 35. And uh, the same slurs were written on his helmet and the butt of his gun. Huh. Also found in the ceiling of his room were two bullet holes, though only one bullet was recovered. So you're thinking someone shot him and then made him discharge his gun. Or maybe make it there was like a struggle and okay. he fired the gun a couple times before the other person got hold of it or something like that. Hard mm -hmm. to say. Also, so you said in the blood splatter, so like the blood splatter is what on the bed because he like falls back or is it like... Uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, they probably drew this picture and the blood stained it eventually. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, this or is maybe just... they were there messing with the blood and like 
Yeah. Using their finger or something. That's um, yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, so I feel like it just that's a lot. You're taking a long time to do some artistic shit that like. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> just got done watching a Night Stalker documentary mm-hmm. on Netflix, and this is sounding unfortunately similar. Right. Um, so the bullet that was recovered apparently had the same slurs written in black ink on it. On the bullet itself? On the bullet itself. So that was like written on the bullet before it's like discharged is what I'm imagining. Like you write it, you clip it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's up for debate whether or not these exist. Two medical examiners said no. Also, a bullet doesn't just like chill as a bullet once it's been fired like a lot of times it breaks down it like yeah chips chips up lines. like the fact that you would still be able to see that or maybe it was on the casing i'm not oh, sure okay. if they left the casing on the ground somewhere who no. knows <clears throat> but uh the family sent these findings to a third independent medical examiner that agreed the photos look consistent with a homicide and when that medical examiner brought this to the attention of the armed forces medical examiner, the independent medical examiner, whom had a son in the armed forces, was pressured into dropping the case oh. and told to destroy whatever files he had or his son would be dishonorably discharged from the military. Sketchy as fuck, man. What? Right? <laughs> that was enough pressure for him to back down. Well, yeah, like that's his son. Yeah. Somebody yeah. clearly in, high up in the military ranks was like, drop this. And at that point, it's like, clearly they killed somebody. <laughs> now I'm going to be the target. So mm. There are other inconsistencies that didn't point to suicide. Um, like his motorcycle was parked in a spot he had never used before. In fact, it was in a handicapped spot. And uh, nothing was stolen from his home, and the doors were all locked when police arrived. But according to his family, about five months before his death, he told them he was concerned about a missing key to his place. Mm -hmm. Other behaviors inconsistent with suicide was that he recently purchased new T-shirts he never wore. He had just put a load of laundry in the wash and food in the microwave moments before his death. Yeah. Also, none of his online actions indicated any kind of unusual behavior. Unfortunately, his computer hard drive was confiscated by the Navy and was subsequently wiped. Of course. Mm, How convenient. (laughs) This may have been done because the ship he was stationed to, the USS Independence, was actually something of a prototype ship and his hard drive may have contained sensitive information about the ship. Interesting. Uh, And it hasn't really been mentioned at all in any of the reports that I've read, but I have like a theory if this writing does exist all over his body. Um, It's like a well-established tradition. uh, Well-established. In the military for as long as it's probably existed, that um, you kind of get hazed when you're promoted. Mm. I mean, it happened to me. Uh, you know, I'm not going to name any names. They don't. They it's technically illegal to do it. Like, there's so many numbers. On I I mean, yeah. Whenever I made a uh, petty officer, like this is a tame one, but um, you would have to get like a, a pin to your to your shoulder. Um, Or even when I got my surface warfare, you would get the pin put onto your uniform. And that day that you got it, anyone with like that was E4 or above would punch you in the arm where you got the crow or where you got the metal. They would punch you in the chest. Sometimes they would take the little backings out, punch you and people would actually bleed from that shit. And it's not comfortable. (laughs) I can imagine. (laughs) It happened to me. Uh, But yeah, it's a well-established You just haze anybody that gets promoted. Um, And it's uh, important to note that Bemis was celebrating a recent promotion uh, promotion just a day before his death. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that that means that he was a chief petty officer making senior chief 
or if he was a first class petty officer making chief petty officer. And if it's that, if it's him becoming a chief petty officer, that's a huge promotion. And I think the hazing ritual, don't quote me because I would never make chief, is a little more intense for people making chief. So I don't know what they do behind closed doors, but very yeah, well could have been the black do. skull stuff. And then you <laughs> pick up two cherries with your butt cheeks. Right. <laughs> right? You can't put them back down until you tied them together. Oh, dang. Yeah. Some no talent. hands. No hands. Some <laughs> talented people out there. <laughs> <laughs> with very sticky butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, despite all of this, the case was concluded as suicide before an investigation could even begin. And because of that, gunshot residue testing was not conducted on his hands. Bemis had three guns, of which his family subsequently had tested, and no blood, blowback, or remains were found on any of his weapons. Also, the gun suspected to be the murder weapon was on the ground, far away from his body, which was inconsistent with suicide gun placement. Yeah, it's always in the hands still. Yeah. The family had that gun tested after it was given back to them, by the examiner, and the gun appeared to be cleaned. Uh. No usable fingerprints could be found on the weapon. Mm. Neighbors reported that he arrived home the night before, sometime around 9 p.m., and suspect that he was met with foul play sometime thereafter. Definitely sounds like some shady stuff going down. And, like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I watch movies and stuff, but, like, <laughs> I feel, like, I'm not surprised that, like... The military, you know, something could have gone wrong with the hazing. Sure. sure. Yeah. That doesn't look great for the military. No, okay. I don't want to throw any names out there. I don't want to besmirch the military. I'm just saying that shit happened to me. <laughs> From personal experience. Yeah. And that was the easy one. That was the light. Yeah, one. that was light. That's just, you know, a fun, you know, ha ha. The fact that you even say fun, ha ha. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, ha ha, you're bleeding. Ha ha, right. so much fun. I mean, I got more tortured when we crossed the equator for the shellback ceremony. Huh. <laughs> we they they put the wedgies? What are they we put the, the whole ship hazes anyone that hasn't been across the equator. Oh, God. Yeah, well, you know. It's also in the name of fun. How many men made love to you? <laughs> <laughs> the whole ship? When you pass the equator, we take you down to the equator. <laughs> Were there any exceptions? <laughs> Did anyone pass? <laughs> Let's get into why anyone would want to kill this man. Yeah. yeah. Your silence is very telling. <laughs> very telling. <laughs> Uh, we'll never know what happens when you cross the equator. <laughs> I was going to say thank you for saying so much by saying so little. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, Bemis was in an on-again, off-again relationship with a girl from Tijuana. Uh, when I knew him, I knew he was in a relationship with a girl from Tijuana. I don't think this is the same girl. I think he just had a type. Okay. But uh, at any rate, not long before his death, the relationship had ended. Though, I will say he did not display any depression associated with the breakup in his behavior leading to his death. At one time or another, the two were in talks of getting married, though Bemis wanted her to sign a prenup. Bemis owned a house in Texas and was unsure, given their on-again, off-again relationship, what would happen to his property. Hmm. Apparently, they were only together when he was in port, and when he was deployed, she would have outside relationships. Mm. So it didn't seem like a very strong... I mean, needless to say, they didn't get married, so it's yeah. not like she's a suspect because she doesn't have like access to... Sure. I will say it's unlikely that she herself killed Bemis, as she was far too small to overpower him. But, you know, she's got family. Right? Yes. <laughs> it is possible someone close oh, to no. her... Uh, may have wanted him dead, maybe a family member or maybe the side piece that she was seeing. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But um, seems still seems like a, a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is unknown whether or not she had a key to his place or whether or not she stole the key to his place. Mm -hmm. A second suspect could be, um, and this is just an extreme speculation mm -hmm. it could be a gentleman caller of sorts that's what i thought 
Um, nothing I knew about Bemis would suggest that he was gay or uh, closeted or anything in between. I mean, he was in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> nothing suggested. No, nothing. But the obvious. I couldn't resist. Sorry. We're a little, yeah, this was definitely, uh, all my service was in the Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I don't know when that policy ended and when this in relation to this murder this was 2012 i'm not i'm not sure if it was before or after so so like in this scenario he's like into the degradation or like being like insulted or like or maybe it would be just like a hook up the dingo right exactly that could be the case like, or he oh I mean, and then just like decide to take it to the extreme of been like, oh, by the way, I'm a Satanist. Let me just. <laughs> I mean, maybe like it could be because a lot of that's a lot of situations with serial killers or whatever. Yeah. Where it's like, I'll pretend to be a gentleman caller or get close to you. It could even ass. be absolutely a person that's not comfortable in their sexuality and they realize, no, I'm not gay, and then hate crime against you know this person. Right. It's mm -hmm. any any number of things, but that's just. A possibility given this writing that's everywhere. There's no like cameras outside the building or anything to help no. us there. No. I just feel like if any of those are the cases, why the pushback from the military on the third, yeah, for sure. third party uh, autopsy? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> clear, that just to me says Maybe you're it's... involved somehow. Maybe it's all tangled up together. Maybe this is a higher up officer from him and they went for this hazing thing and mm -hmm. then hazing turned into like just drinking together or yeah. and then it turned into a sexual thing and then it's it turned possible. into this repressed it's all stories in violence. I know, it could be. <laughs> um, <laughs> a third suspect might actually have nothing to do with Bemis at all. Bemis actually shared his condo with a man named Manny. Manny was also in the Navy, and though they both lived in the same condo, they were rarely ever at the condo at the same time. I don't know. That just tells me that he is this other guy. <laughs> you never see him at the same place at the same time. Uh, like I'm living a double life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the sister. Uh, I mean, in the year or so that they both lived at that condo, they were only there together for about a week in total. Okay. Um, Manny was on deployment when Bemis was killed, but Manny did look a little like Bemis, as they both had the military haircut and the uniform. So it's possible that someone maybe was after Manny and... Mistook mistaken, him. yeah. I guess Manny known for having made a lot of enemies. I mean, I'm not entirely. We or nobody knows about Manny. Is he really. known for like being at the gay club every night? It's hard to say mm. on any of that. But you know, given that he's riding a motorcycle, got the helmet on, got the uniform, it's possible that maybe Manny somebody... rides a bike too. And they know this guy to be living there. They don't know of any other person living there. Mm -hmm. So it could have been. Mistaken identity. Um, I will say last was that Bemis was in contact with a fellow service member helping her through sexual harassment issues in the workplace. Uh, he was steadfast in doing what was right and not one to back down from you know, an issue. Uh, so it's possible that maybe he knew too much and that had he taken his findings to the right people, someone may be very high up, could have been dishonorably discharged. And, that sounds pretty plausible. I mean, I know lifers in the in the military, you know, some that are like so indebted to their service that it's like being kicked out or dishonorably discharged or even demoted is like, you know, akin to death. It's like a death sentence. To but them, also like it's bad press. If, yeah. if a high-ranking officer is, like, sexually harassing these yeah. poor people who are trying to serve their country or whatever, yeah, uh, that coming to light is something that I feel like I mean, they would, would go to great lengths. Destroy to your entire, I mean, your career would end, your relation, your home relationship would end, a lot of things would go down. And that, yeah, it's possible that maybe this person that's high up could be, you know, the one wiping his hard drives and threatening people not to look into it. Who knows? Could be the captain of his ship. Not saying it. Don't know the captain. Don't know. <laughs>
Um, that's all the information I have on the case. Uh, I will say that um, he wasn't a close friend, you know. He, uh, we only talked to each other a couple of times and stuff and didn't really hang out. So, but uh, he did find me on Facebook years after I got out of the Navy um, and like messaged me out of the blue. And I'm like, oh shit, Bemis. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I haven't what talked to you in saying? years. I actually did look him back up, uh, like the, the messages that we talked about, which was um, back in like 2012, mm -hmm. shortly before his, uh, like a year and a half or so. No, it was 2000 nine or 10. It was like a year and a half before his death or whatever. But um, I was, uh, our last communication was just about, um, I was finishing up college in Sacramento and I was like, I'm going to move out to Los Angeles and be a substitute teacher. <laughs> well, luckily only one of those things happened. <laughs> the dream of being a substitute teacher. <laughs> I want to be like Peggy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I took the tests and everything, getting ready to be a substitute teacher, moved out here and I was like, why the fuck would I want to be a substitute teacher? <laughs> uh, I feel like it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I just did not. I did not see the appeal, but he... Uh, <laughs> you don't strike say, me as somebody who likes being around kids a lot. No, I did not know how to speak but to But also, him. with that, you wouldn't be worried about the teacher, like, pushing narratives on your kids, because, like, Rob is so, like... Chill. Chill. Yeah, I, I would definitely be the teacher that's like, let me put in this VHS. <laughs> talk, 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 <laughs> watch about bad guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hope you like Werner Herzog. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see some cave paintings. <laughs> uh, his message was that he was moving from Newport, Rhode Island, and that he got orders for the USS Independence, and he was excited to be moving back to San Diego, and that he was working on his degree in business management overachiever. <laughs> uh, I was contacted by Bemis's father shortly after his death. He was looking to see if I had any information as to what happened to his son. And as I said before, didn't really know the guy. Uh, we weren't really great friends, uh, just work friends. And um, Little do you know, he had like a whole diary talking about how like, he <laughs> know, loved right? and respected okay. you. And, like, <laughs> I really hope not. Good friends. If he like... only knew how many days I slacked off in the Navy. <laughs> 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 he would not like my work ethic. <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, I, I, I didn't like the Navy. I, as soon as I got off the ship, I ran off and threw my uniform in an airport garbage can. Nice. Could it on fire. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, I got on the no-fly list for a little while. <laughs> I was actually <laughs> stuck in San Diego for a long time. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so um, who would have known that, you know, seven, eight years later, I'd be doing a fucking mystery podcast and I got a mystery sitting here, so kind of felt obligated in a way to you know do what i could to maybe bring more awareness to this uh you know use my platform however big it is <laughs> yeah, it's at least, to, you know there's some people listening to us right something like thirty five thousand yeah. downloads now and uh there's uh, this isn't we're not the first podcast to be covering this story so oh, this really? is on there other is a uh, good word has been said yeah <laughs> the word is out there um, but I will say if, uh, you have any information on the case, please contact the Bemis family at cpojohnkeithbemis.com. You can also go to their change.org page and sign their petition to reopen the investigation into their son's death. Um, yeah, personally, I don't know. I can't say whether or not he died by suicide. Um, didn't really know him well enough to make that assessment. I feel like he would be the type of guy that would at least like leave a note, uh, would at least speak to somebody. Somebody would, he, I mean, he's talking to people about suicide prevention. He's talking to people about sexual harassment and shit like that's heavy. I feel like he would have gone to somebody to at least mm -hmm. talk about it before making such a decision. I also think that the putting the clothes in the wash, putting food in the microwave just moments before also seems a little strange. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why you would, I don't know, it's just, it's hard. I mean, I don't know a lot about suicide, but I, I do know that there are some people who have like survived it and they say they made the decision pretty just out of the blue, you know, the wasn't thinking about it 
and just thought about it. And within the hour, sometimes within the five minutes of making the decision, they commit to it. And so, so I, yeah, I don't, I can't say whether or not this is that person. I'm just saying there are pieces of evidence that don't exactly lead me to believe suicide. And that's why I feel like it should be reopened. Um, yeah, I mean, well, if, if nothing else, there's two bullet holes in this dealing. Right. They paint a big fucking question. <laughs> At least investigate it. Yeah. You know, Put a little more, you know, effort into it. See, just reopen it. Yeah, I guess it's hard to now too, though, because obviously things have been, if not at the least, bungled. You know. Yeah, Why it's hard is to the gun wipe down, unless of course it was just a really smart, you know, killer right. who knew to wipe the gun down. And I was gonna I say know. not to like make light of his case now and like make, you know conclusions that may be out of the question or whatever <laughs> but that's like our job so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting that you were saying he was on a prototype boat oh, yeah. which yeah, is very yeah, interesting yeah. like maybe they finally figured out how to do the Philadelphia project and oh, like yeah. you know time warp this ship or like make this ship invisible or whatever and he had classified whatever and then mm. they like staged it to look like it was a weird homophobic something so yeah. that way it's like, clearly it was the gay thing and Satan's there too. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might have been, I mean, like I said, I don't know when in relation to the uh, repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell This Falls. Didn't do that kind of research. But, um, you know, it maybe there was, I, maybe there was a big pushback for the, from that. And there was like, you know, the red scare of the, 50s, you know, where people were just being labeled com communist, you know, out of fear or whatnot. Right. He just had yeah, nice maybe. fashion sense, like to be well manicured. It's very possible. And people just went crazy. Um, I will say if you uh, or anyone you know is struggling with suicide, please call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1 800 273 8255. Um, and that's really all I have on the. Uh, Mystery. We I mean, also should note that you can't, We. it's not proper to say commit suicide and why they died by suicide. Died by suicide, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell was in 2011. September. So it was, yeah, right before that. Yeah. You know, maybe a lot of people were coming out. Uh, maybe it was a little more relaxed environment and maybe there was some pushback to that. I'm not sure I was well out of the Navy by then. Is it possible that he had some sensitive information on this prototype sub or whatever, and maybe it was like a spy situation? I mean, it's possible. I will say that he was an engine man. So he worked on ACNR. Uh, you know, that's about, you know, the trash compactor. Um, that's about as far as an engine man's duties went in my eyes well you never know i mean it was very valuable to get that little disc to the empire you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the, the rebels to get in there this was episode 3.5 <laughs> <laughs> okay so fair enough probably not a spy situation we don't know maybe he was a double agent and he oh. was going in to get information oh yeah. maybe Poor Bemis. Poor Bemis. Uh, yeah. Definitely not aliens, because they're cleaner than that. Or maybe it is because they were exactly clean enough to get away with it. Yeah. yeah aliens. They knew to wipe the gun and everything. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I'm in all honesty, if I had to lean one way or the other, I would say it was probably a suicide, as really? bad as that sounds. Uh, but that's just... Because he's part of the military. And <laughs> yes, please don't come on after me. Yeah. I want I want to stay honorably discharged. Right. <laughs> We're going to punish you by realistic. Oh, yeah. No, I do have nightmares sometimes about that. Where I'm like, how did I get back? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys for indulging me in this. I promise the mysteries after here, this will be a lot more like lighthearted. You know? <laughs> Next week, I'll probably come in with something like magnets. 
how do they work? You know, or some <laughs> shit like that. Mystery of that. <laughs> yeah, tune in for that gym. <laughs> it's just Rob like holding two packs. <laughs> They ruin. attract. They <laughs> repel. He ends up ruining a bunch of like electrical. Yeah. We're like, oh no, this sounds terrible. We can't even use the magnets episode. Uh, for High Mystery, I'm Robert. I'm Colin. I'm Tristan. Uh, yeah, like, uh, like, where's the outro? Yeah, you, you, there's the a same. format to this, right? <laughs> I did do the outro. I was talking about magnets. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Fair see, enough. Yeah. All right. Touche. <laughs> New episodes every Monday. Want more High Mystery? Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash high mystery for exclusive episodes every Friday. Merchandise can be found at our website at highmystery.com. Stay up to date by following us on Facebook and Instagram at High Mystery for fan art, news, and upcoming events. Thanks for listening.